Peter, second chapter, first verse. Wherefore, lying aside all malice and all guilt and hypocrisy and envy and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisy and envy and all evil speaking, our text tonight will be five things that will stop spiritual growth. Father, take the holy, eternal Word of God and anoint us and bless us. Let the Word of God find a place in our hearts tonight. For we know we're living in the very last, last moments of this dispensation. Help us, Lord, to be ready. In Christ's name, amen. You may be seated. Since we are living in the very last minutes of this dispensation, it's high time to wake out of our sleep, shake loose from everything and every weight that would so easily beset us, and run this race of patience, because it'll be too late, one minute after the rapture. We are warned, be ye therefore ready, for in an hour you think not, the Son of Man cometh. And he tells us to stay ready because we know not the day nor the hour. But we do know that we're living in the very last of the last days. And it's time for us to watch as well as pray. Watch your step and watch it often. Watch your motives, your feelings, your neglects. And then after you do all that for a long time, you might help somebody else. But I like that old song, It's not my brother in the need of prayer, but it's me, O Lord, that standeth in the need of prayer. I'm in this to make it to heaven. Wouldn't it be terrible to help hundreds of others get to heaven? Then you miss it. You see, a minister has to watch for his own soul as well as a lot of other folk. Because if I don't preach it like he gives it to me, then I can lose my own soul. I sometimes envy, just a little bit, the lay member that don't have the great responsibility of preaching the word, and yet you do. Uh... You are responsible for the life that you live. Amen. As well as what you say, your actions, your, the place you go, the influence, and all these things, they are sermons that you live every day. It takes, somebody said, 21 years to uh, make a man full grown according to the laws of the land, it takes 21 years to build a good sermon at personal down to earth sermon that you preach to yourself. You know, do you ever preach to yourself? Do you ever back yourself up in the corner? And say, now look a here. It's time for you to stop and think. And we're going to do things different. 
Now, if you don't take inventory, somebody may else may forget to take it until you're dead. And that's too late. Because as the tree falls, so shall it be. Now the Bible said he's coming in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. As the lightning shines from the east to the west, so shall it be when the Son of Man cometh. You ever watch that lightning flash? Well, that's the way the coming of the Lord will take place. He's coming as a thief in the night. People will be eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, farming, plowing, planting, harvesting, going to work. Some will be going to work. Some will be coming back from work. But suddenly, he'll come. He won't even wait until the altar service is over. He's going to come. Some came on the way to the altar but never made it. There'll be some getting married. And while they stand there, one can be taken and the other left. That's how sudden it's going to be. So that's why I'm talking to you tonight about lay aside every week. And never sinned. It was so easy to beset you. Because God's no respecter of persons. It doesn't matter how many mountains you moved. If you sin today, you're guilty. It doesn't matter how many thousands of souls you have caused to be saved in the past. But that is not, that is overlooked if you sin today. You see, ever sin that you commit that's not under the blood, you will pay for that sin. And it doesn't make any difference if you're a minister or a leader in the church or somebody that's lived a good life all of your life until today. That's enough to make you miss the rapture. So that's why the Apostle Paul said, I die daily. Every day of my life, I'm on my knees praying and talking to God. And that's the only way to be sure. To die out to the things of the world daily, to die out to the flesh, to die out to all the, the desires of the flesh to die out to that daily because it's always trying to get out of line. There's a warfare going on. Jesus himself said the flesh is weak and but the spirit is willing. The flesh don't want to pray but the spirit does and we grow hungry to pray whether you know it or not you grow hungry to pray and if you're not careful you'll fill up on beans potatoes and you're still hungry and you'll go back and get a dessert some ice cream and pour some chocolate on top of that and you still there's something lacking you hadn't fed the man on the inside. You can't feed him on beans and potatoes and uh, hot biscuits and butter and syrup. You can't feed him on that. But a lot of folks have never realized that. They say, I'm restless. I don't know what's wrong with me. I can't seem to find uh, what I want to eat. And uh, maybe I need a vacation. Maybe I need to go fishing or... Maybe I need to go see Aunt Jane, or, or maybe I need to think up something new to cook. Did you ever stop to think it could be the Holy Ghost? That empty, that vacancy that has not been filled up. I'll tell you what, if you're full of the Holy Ghost, 
and you listen to something you oughtn't to listen to, you begin to feel sort of empty and numb right in here. Did you ever notice? You listen to some old rotten music, you know, and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost inside is pulling back away from that. It don't want to listen to it. It don't want to feel that. God help us to be sensitive to what the Holy Ghost loves and don't love. All right. It said, wherefore, laying aside. I mean, he said, lay it aside. Don't hang on to it. Lay aside all malice. Now that's spite, ill will. And uh, Cain had that. He killed his brother, Joseph's brother, and had that. He had gifts from God. And uh, he some way or another walked with the Lord and he, God would give him dreams and and they resented him. They didn't like him. That dreamer they called him, you know. They were just full of malice. They, 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 they decided to get rid of him. And uh, they tried their best to get rid of him. But he was the most spiritual one of the crowd. You ever notice they're the ones people like to pick on? You get on fire, close to God. That's the kind the world don't like. That's why they crucified the Lord. They couldn't find any fault in Him. Pilate said, I don't find the fault in Him. And all those priests couldn't really find nothing. They made up something. But they killed him anyway. They couldn't stand to have a man on earth that didn't have any sin. Now, had he been full of sin, eat and drank with the drunkard, lied a little bit, and did the things they were doing, they'd have loved him. Because the devil loves his own crowd. You watch that. He loves his own crowd. But he hates the church of the living God. If you get in the church and still think the devil's going to pat you on the back, you are ignorant. And if you get in the church like you ought to be in the church, the world's not going to like you. My Bible said, Woe be unto you when all men speak well of you. If you live it, they ain't going to like you. They'll be glad when you're gone. All right, I'm talking about them old hypocrites. I'm talking about them old rotten sinners. They just can't stand you. And I'm glad they can't. I really am. Uh, if I can't make the devil mad, then I need to go and pray through. Because if you let up on your prayer life, he'll let you alone a while. He won't bother you. He said, don't say nothing. He's not praying. Hey, just let him alone. Let him prosper. Yeah. Send old John and old Bill and old all that bunch by and pat him on the back. Man, everything. Uh, keep him encouraged, uh, you fellas, now because he's he ain't going to church much no more. And he just uh, don't pray anymore much. And uh, we don't want no crisis to come along. It'll get him on his knees. So let's just let it go. Let him drift. But I want you to...